Noka Chima Ariel is a public health physician and a professor of community medicine and health systems economics with over 23 years work experience in both clinical medicine and internal development. He has extensive experience working in the public and private health sector. He holds a bachelor's degree in medicine and surgery from the University of Port Harcourt, Nigeria, and obtained his first master's degree in health policy planning and financing from London School of Economics and Political Science, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. He's a fellow of the West African College of Physicians. He obtained his second master's degree in public health from the University of Nigeria before proceeding for his doctorate degree in health systems economics from London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Chima's work has focused on the policy and management systems for the provision and delivery of various disease control programs, as well as strengthening health systems in general. He has led research for several years with the Health Policy Research Group, College of Medicine, University of Nigeria, Enugu Campus, including small to large scale studies funded by local and international organizations and has developed considerable experiences in managing and analyzing small to large scale policy and implementation. He has served as consultant for a number of activities for national and international agencies, non-governmental organizations, including the National Primary Health Development Agency, Federal Ministry of Health, and Health Reform Foundation of Nigeria. He has been able to also identify and engage with stakeholders and program managers in ways that help align research with practice. Without further delay, please let's make welcome the CEO. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Chris. Here this evening, um, and um, I can see there are people from some other parts of the world as well. Um, you know, it's just a privilege, really, to share this evening and on this platform. The, the Starting Strong program or set series, even though it's called like Starting Strong, is um, it's, it's grown to be what a lot of people actually desire to be part of, to listen to, because it brings practical things right to our doorsteps, wherever people are. And um, the team that has been managing it and hosting it have just been excellent, helping every one of us to share experiences, um, to listen to what others have done. And this evening, I believe the Lord that is also going to, you know, share something with us, very definite. And so, um, Father, we thank you for this evening. We bless you in this few minutes, Lord. We ask that you take charge, take control, and speak something deaf to our heart to navigate this challenging, this complex world. Take all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this evening, what I'll just share, what I'll just showcase, is one of the foundational things. During IFL, we call it an IFL experience. We don't call it a training. We don't call it a seminar. We don't call it, you know, lectures. We call it an experience. Um, why? It is what it is, an experience. An experience that lives with anybody that participates. In fact, I must, and uh, forgive me, um, Grace, to, if I say this and expose you. Grace was doing house job. Grace booked flight. She didn't even go by road. She paid her flight during house job, used the little she was getting, booked a return ticket, and spent the one week there, blocked a week. And she has not been the same since then. That's commitment. That's dedication. That's a decision decision and by way of foundation for what we're talking about 
this evening. You see, I told some 18 yesterday, I shared with our brethren in the UK, CMD Nigeria Global, um, Global Network, the UK and Europe region. I made some statements. I said that when people are determined, determined, they end up having insight. When there's determination, they'll have insight. Once there's insight, there'll be creativity. If people are creative, they will be achievers. They will be productive, so they will become achievers. It's the only path that can lead to impact. That's a chain of impact. It begins with a determination, short or insight, which leads to creativity and achieving things because the person becomes productive. That's the pathway to impact. Anybody know that journey? can't make impact <laughs> like we've been singing impact 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 it's important to be on the journey on the journey on the journey you can't be in a car and expect you are in abuja expect to be in lagos in one hour even the coastal road that the minister of works is promoting can't take you there you can't be in a car and expect to be in Lagos from Abuja in one hour. The only way to do that is to enter an airplane. If you're not in an airplane, you cannot, <laughs> except you're a witch or wizard, <laughs> and you're using broom. Even that, the broom won't get there. <laughs> it won't get there. You know, um, so there's a pathway if somebody is locked in that pathway, sealed, then the person is has the potential to get to where he's talking about. And that's connected to our discussion this evening, brethren. Wherever you are, wherever we are on the journey of life, I will share these few words. I'll share these few words, and I hope that, um, you know, we're blessed. So, we all are different phases of our life's journeys. And um, I'll just share this one part. This is something that we'll do in about one hour, but at the beginning, as we work on resetting certain things. Um, whenever you can hear me, give me a shout. Um, why do we want to do this? One, just to have some big picture view of the course of life. Um, secondly, to try to locate ourselves where we are, um, where we are to locate ourselves a bit. And um, thirdly, to also try to um, deliberately apply some of our findings, whatever thoughts that come to our minds um, along our journey. You know, think about it from the point of view of application. Um, I'll try to be fast. One of the things I brought this into this um component but we keep it as a separate thing we keep this as a very foundational thing um when we start and i want to whatever you you are doing just spare a few moments um while we share make sure that if you're connected that you are actually here you're not connected and distracted and in a few minutes and in some minutes, we'll do a few things, we'll watch a few things as well, and um, you know, take it from there. One of the key things that affects our lives is, you know, the our 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 behaviors, or let me even put it, people's behaviors generally. People's behaviors, people's actions, people's interactions and what they say and how they handle situations um, you can tie it to their perspectives and perspectives clearly is a viewpoint a viewpoint which influences attitude it influences behaviors it influences actions it influences you know, whatever people do and how they do them, their perspectives is basically 
their viewpoint, their point of view. Now, someone wakes up and he tells you, oh, look, 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 let me use something that is common. I can't, I can't, you know, I can't marry from one place or the other. No, we can, we only marry, we can only marry from this place. We don't marry from certain places. It's a viewpoint. Now, that viewpoint, you want to deal with it. It's difficult. If you keep arguing based on viewpoints, you will always have things to argue about. You always keep making arguments. Why? The viewpoints are informed by something. They're informed by, for instance, that person, the parents told the person while growing up that people of a certain area are not good when it comes to marriage. In fact, they have them and they have examples in their families. So now that viewpoint that looks ordinary is shaped by a model that has been constructed in the person's heart. It's shaped by what we'll call a pattern or a paradigm. Now, the truth is that if you don't discover, if you don't go beyond the perspectives the viewpoints of people and listen, which is why those who don't listen often don't really fully address problems. Well, the surface, but it's a bit difficult for them to address it in a sustainable manner. They are not patient enough to listen, not patient enough to listen to pay patients, not patient enough to listen to those who they are interacting with, those who they feel have an issue, when it's when we listen that we end up going beyond the viewpoint and not, you know, judging and staying on things based on the perspectives, but we go deeper to that point of discovering the paradigm, discovering the real models that have been constructed in the people's hearts. It's those models that influence the perspectives and the perspectives are, get reflected in the behaviors. People's behaviors are a reflection of their points of view and their points of view are shaped by their paradigms. Except you deal with the paradigms, you get to the foundations, which is the paradigms. You cannot unlock that life you can't unlock that problem especially in a sustainable manner now i'll keep it at that we take time during ifl to examine and test strong things and examine you know go deeper into understanding and exploring different aspects points for application so that things like this stick and when we talk about the course of life i, I, I will start with this scripture in Ecclesiastes 11, um, beautiful scripture. It says that it's a wonderful thing to be alive. <laughs> it is. If a person lives to be very old, let him rejoice in every day of his life. And in our, this evening, we have people from, people that are, that it's, it's a cross-cutting thing across all ages. Uh, you know, there are the young, there are the you know, um, less young, depending on how you are counting it. There are those who are older um, who are here. And people have gone through their own journeys. But he said there, the preacher said, let him rejoice. Let him also remember. I know that's not very easy, like if you're in Nigeria, um, and likewise some other parts of the world. Uh, but more likely if you're in Nigeria at this moment. But he says, let him also remember that eternity is far longer and that everything down here is futile in comparison. Hmm. Eternity is far longer. He said, rejoice every day, but remember that eternity is far longer and everything down here is futile when compared to eternity. 
everything else it is futile. The issues we face, the school we go to, the certificates, oh boy. I, we, I mean, many of us are aware that, you know, a, a few months ago, earlier in the year, on the first, 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 second day of the year or so, you know, my dad was, his body was laid to rest. And I had the opportunity of, you know, for the purpose of tidying up, you know, things in the house and all that to look through, to check their doc, you know, their boxes and all of that, just two days after, just to tidy up things a bit. My God, I saw all kinds of things, certificates of participation at seminars, events, conferences, achievements here and there, meetings that they went for, meetings that they took, you know, associations that they led, you know, documents that they gathered. You know what struck me? Nobody in this world again is going to ask for my dad's certificate. It's useless to every single person. It cannot be presented before any authority. It is not useful anymore. It's gone. I was like, I was torn in between. <laughs> Am I supposed to destroy this or not? If I don't destroy it, what is it going to be used for? And I said, I reflected. All the certificates, is a, Grace was calling a, few, a couple of things. All of them, the day I'm out of here, there's nothing else I'm applying for. There's no need for a reference. There's no need for anything. It's gone. Useless. Useless. My child will not use it to get a job. <laughs> Nobody is going to make use of it. It's not... The person is attributed to is gone, gone, gone. Everything down here, futile when compared to eternity. So he said in verse 9, young man, young woman, it's wonderful to be young. Say hey, say hi, high five. It's wonderful. Enjoy, enjoy every minute of it. Do all you want to do. Go ahead, travel around the world, be the biggest celebrity everywhere, have the biggest likes on social media, have the have 30 million followers, showcase yourself every said, It's wonderful. Enjoy every minute. Do all you want. Take in everything. Oh boy. Suck everything up. <laughs> but realize that you must give account to God for everything you do, every single thing. And in a bit, we're also going to see that from scripture. So banish grief and pain. Go ahead, do whatever you want to do to banish it. Go wherever you want to go to banish it. Spend whatever you want to spend to banish it. Enjoy, have fun, celebrate. Go for events every weekend. Have fun. Get lost in fun. Just know. <laughs> Remember that youth. Remember that life, whatever stage we are at. Remember that youth with a whole life before it <laughs> can make serious mistakes. Remember remember. And so, Jeremiah said, or God telling Jeremiah said, I knew you before you were formed within your mother's womb. Before you were born, I actually had a plan for you. I appointed you as a spokesman. You see, no matter how many arguments people make about even things like Abortion, people can defend it. People can say what they want to say. If I said, if the scripture is true and this word 
if it came from God, <laughs> it's hard to justify. We can't get away from that business. I, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, before you were born. That is, before you were born, I saw you, I knew you, I sanctified you, before you were formed, 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 that's the word. Before you were formed in the womb, I had already appointed you as a spokesman to the world. Let's keep it there. And I want us to watch this video. I hope it's going to, if I need to stop it at some point, I will. Um, if you can hear the sound, let me know. But let's watch. The world's going to keep making you look at your past, your past, your past. But we got to keep looking at the future. You look at your past, you're going to get depressed. And you're going to get stuck in your past. You look to your future. You go, man, what is that moment going to be like? See, my actions, a lot of the things I do is because I'm thinking about my future. And I'm thinking about that moment when I see Jesus because I realize that everything I do is going to bring either reward or regret. It really is. I've got an extra thousand bucks. Okay, on that day, that future, when I see Jesus, what is going to bring reward and what's going to bring regret? I, I could buy a lot of fun things for myself with that thousand bucks, but on that day, Paul's saying, I'm just looking at that day, going on that day. Maybe I just give it to the poor because on that day, I'll be rewarded for it versus, yeah, I mean, we've all bought things we regret, right? Go, oh, that was a waste of money. That's a waste of money. That's a waste of money. Think about what we're going to say at the end when we stand before God. Are you going to regret the car you drove? Regret the house you lived in? Regret the clothes you wore? Regret, you know, just, just everything. What are you going to regret? What about your time and how you spent it? Are you going to, are you going to go, oh, I'm so glad I watched 7,000 movies? Are you going to regret, wow, I wasted all of that time now? It's, it's, it's about the future. Paul's going, man, what am I going to look forward to at the end? I'm going to bring an illustration that this is like the first illustration I did. It was 20 years ago, but I can't think of a better way to, to explain it. Um, I actually didn't use a rope back then. I used a, remember, a, remember computer paper when uh, it was all stuck together? And it had the holes on the side that you had to peel off. Remember that? I remember getting a, a roll. And some of you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, which is crazy to me. But because uh, that was the best, you know. And um, and it never worked right because of the rolling things. But uh, but I, I had I remember being a youth pastor and I put uh, that computer paper all the way around the room. And uh, but I'm gonna use a rope now because I can't find that computer paper. Um, imagine this rope. Okay, pretend this rope just goes on forever, okay? Just imagination. Pretend it goes around the world a few times. It doesn't. It ends at the rock. But uh, let's just imagine this thing goes on forever. Now, imagine that this rope is a timeline of your existence. It just exists forever. You see this red part? This would represent your time on Earth. You've got a few short years here on earth and then you've got all of eternity somewhere else. This is, this is your existence. And what blows me away is some of you, all you think about is this red part. It's all you think about. You're consumed with this. You go, oh man, I can't wait till here. You know, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to save, save, save so I can really enjoy this part right here. <laughs> And you're consumed with that. And you're thinking, oh, man, am I going to get to travel? Am I going to eat well? Am I going to do this during this part? And I'm like, are you kidding me? What about this? What about this? What about th What about all this stuff? It's, just, it's crazy to me because the Bible teaches that what I do during this little red part determines how I'm going to exist for millions and millions and millions of years forever. And, and so why would I spend this little red part trying to make myself as comfortable as possible, enjoying myself as much as I can, 
Paul says, look, I'm going to live my life for this mission. I'm going to spend my life, invest my life for this moment when I cross that finish line. I'm going to forget about all this stuff I could enjoy. And I'm not going to look around. I'm going to be like a runner just looking at that moment when I face God. Because when I face him, then I don't get this chance over again. We get one chance at this life on earth. It can end at any second for any of us. We've got one chance at this. And then comes eternity. And I, I'm not going to be fooled. I'm not going to spend my life down here. See, people look at some of my decisions and go, oh, you're so stupid because that's going to really affect this. I go, no, you're stupid because that's going to affect all of this. Man, I, I, I'm serious. I, I look. I look at the way people live and I go, wow, that is so crazy. You are so crazy. You're going you're gonna to do that right now. Just enjoy right now. Not even knowing if you have tomorrow and you think that's smart and that I'm dumb. It doesn't make any sense. Paul goes, I'm not going to look around at all this stuff. And it's tempting. It's tempting to all of us. That's what I'm saying down here. It's crazy because everyone lives that way. Everyone lives for the red part. No one's thinking about the millions of years afterwards. It's, it's just a crazy deception that we can't get out of our minds. And Paul goes, I'm not doing that because I keep my eyes on that. I keep my eyes on that finish line and I'm going to forget what's behind me. I'm not looking around. I'm just going to, I'm straining because I'm straining forward. I'm like stretching forward for that mark. I'm going to pass this thing. I'm going to live this out and I'm going to face him. I'm going to come before the judges and he's going to hand me that trophy. He goes, I'm going to get it. And I haven't gotten there yet. He goes, but I, you better believe I'm using every muscle exerting every bit about me because I'm going to pass that line. Well, you know, brethren, the truth is that when someone makes decisions for sin, the person does not understand the length of the potential consequence. How long is going to live with the consequence? That when we are activated on this side, We've been activated. What follows is a transition. Everybody is resurrecting in the journey of life. Everybody. There's a resurrection of the dead. Those who do what is right. Those who are saved and continue in that course into eternity, the other side. There's a resurrection unto eternal life. The other people that are dead as well will rise. They've been condemned already, including those believers who choose to abandon the faith and who choose to, to basically to offend the Holy Spirit and call the blood that saved them rubbish by living in sin after salvation so they wake up along with this ones to an eternal damnation so the, the the terrible thing about hell is that it is eternal as well <laughs> it's it is it is endless it's not like it just stops at some point and then we spend these initial parts of our lives just doing stupid things Lifetime is what we're looking at. It starts with that entry. And when we enter as we're born, there is this period of time which varies. Varies, varies for everybody. And I don't want us to be so parochial about fixing, getting fixated, that it's 20, 70 years, 100 years, 120 I mean, some people really lived long. Methuselah lived so long. I, I traced it from the scriptures there. And I discovered that it was the year that Methuselah, was it the flood that took him? I don't know. Probably so. <laughs> it was that same year that the flood came. That's the year he turned that 969 years. Maybe it's part of it. He said, 
Noah, Noah, my son, 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 son. Please, that thing that he's talking about, let him proceed. Me, you can't carry me anywhere. <laughs> let me, I can't be moved. Maybe it wasn't even, nobody could move him. But some people feel they're only 100 years. Some say it's whatever. But I know that Jesus lived somewhere around 33 years and he was done. So there's this lifetime. The exit, the real hallmark of the exit, what God's expectation of it should be is that I have completed my course. I have run my race, my own, my own, my own, your own. When it's done, like John the Baptist, he will say, I must decrease, he must de increase. Jesus did not bother to go and prevent the death of John the Baptist. It was time. He was 33 and a half years or so, or a little over 30, 33 years, because he was six months older than Jesus here on this side of eternity. But he had to go. Why? He that is of all the people, he was the forerunner. He needed to go. His assignment was done. Then the moment Jesus was done, said, it is finished. I'm done. That's the time of exit to continue on the other side. I'm done, but go and wait for me. I'm going to show you a glimpse of what it looks like on the other side before I ascend. I'm going to show you a, a, a glimpse of it. And that's what he did with the disciples. After our exit, because of time, we can't go too much into details here is an encounter with God. There's going to be that encounter. You see, as we are serving people, we are privileged to be physicians. And every day, we are meeting people who are exiting. There are other illustrations that we use here to look at this life course with the peculiarities of the specialties in medicine. And where nearly every specialty plays a role in what happens during this course of life. Um, but that's not for this discussion today. The next is encounter with God. And of course, the eternal destinations that I mentioned. And it's twofold. It's in two dimensions, like I said. Hell or heaven. And it is eternal destination. Eternal destination. As we see in the scriptures. So we enter, we spend a lifetime, we exit, there's an encounter with God, and then there are destinations. And I'll say, before I close with a few things, right, you know, just to start bringing it together. Bible says in Psalm 139 verse 16, that my eyes, his eyes, <laughs> He was speaking about the Lord. Your eyes did see my substance. It's like echoing what God himself said to Jeremiah. You saw my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. David repeating the same thing that God himself had said uh, that God said later, much later, David saying what God much later now said directly to Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the womb by knew thee. David said, you saw my substance. All my members were written before even one of them had come to pass. <laughs> NLT puts it in this way, that you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment laid out before a single day had passed. It doesn't matter whether it is today that we're doing house job, residency, I'm a consultant today, or I'm working in development sector, or in a mission field, or doing whatever. Every day, there is a certain every day that is written in your book, book singular, before one day had passed. So 
What did he say in Psalm 39 verse 4? So let me know my life's end and to appreciate the extent of my days. Let me know how frail and transient I am, basically. You have kept count of my wanderings, your thought, my tears, and your bottle. Have not you recorded them in your book? Psalm 56 verse 8. And I also want to speak to you anybody who is in tears for one reason or the other. Those tears are in a bottle that are within the scope of God's own visibility. He's counting them and he's waiting for the day that is called in the fullness of time and he will visit. He will visit and Sarah shall be with a son. He will visit and Emmanuel shall be with an answer. He will visit and Olumide will be will receive his answer. He will visit and will be rejoicing in your hearts. Weeping is only permitted to endure for the night. Your joy has come. Your morning is breaking forth. God is recording and is coming. If a human being dies again, say it. I'll endure the time of my assigned service until I am changed. I want to close with, in fact, I'm drawn to close with a video. Now, this was two weeks before Miles Moreau died. I wanted to listen to it, and that's what we'll close with um, because of our time, so that we can entertain questions as well. And that's why I really came to Kenya. I came to Kenya because of the cemetery, uh, because I knew that sitting in your house right there where you are and sitting in this studio are people who are the next candidate to add to the wealth of the cemetery. I wrote one book. There's 10 left. If you died now at a cemetery wrong, God bless. I came to Kenya because I want you to rob the cemetery. I want you to die empty. I want you to die with nothing else left to do. I want you to die because you poured out all of your dreams, ideas, visions, books, music, inventions, publications, that you died empty. That's the goal of life. Don't die old, die empty. As a matter of fact, one of the greatest statements I ever heard about dying is this statement. I think it's my beautiful statement of dying. It says, it is finished. <laughs> Three words. The guy who said that was only 33 years old, it is finished. He didn't say I was finished because we don't die. We are eternal spirits. He says, it is finished. I poured out what I came to earth to pour out. Was that the guy on the cross? That's the guy on the cross. All right. You see, I remember these things. My goal in life is to help everybody die empty. That's why I come to meet you, Jeff. You wrote a book. I love your book. But I'm thinking, what about the next one that's not released yet? No, there's no sequel. Or the other five. No, there's no sequel. Or the other ten. I have no energy. I'm sure it's there. There's no way a man with your story could not have ten stories. Hmm. Don't die with my books. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to challenge every Kenyan. Yes. Go to the cemetery and disappoint the graveyard. Die like the Apostle Paul who said, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have been poured out like a drink offering. There's nothing left. I am ready to die. That's where I want to die. I want to die because there's nothing else to keep me alive. I've done what I was born to do. This, to me, is the greatest act of service to humanity, to deliver to us what you came to give us. You're doing a good job, but there's more. I believe that what you're dreaming is bigger than what you're doing right now. I believe you see your own networks that you own. I believe that you have your own studios. I believe I see you producing shows that are syndicated all over the world. You deserve to be heard. Preach, Dr. Preach. Why sell for Kenya when you can have the continent? Hello. Are talented, gifted, you're powerful. You should be publishing a magazine. 
You should be producing all kinds of t-shirts with your shirt with your name on it. You should be starting maybe a, a line of clothing with your name on it. This is an image we need to see, feel, touch. Hey, don't dive into stuff, okay? <laughs> And I go see each one of you watching this program. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know who you are and where you are. I mean, don't squeeze yourself and be thinking that you're in Nigeria, so you are in the whole world. Your head is big. Okay, I'm in the US. You can, you can be global. You can be a kingdom asset. The whole world can be your parish. The whole world, the whole world. Is it that I'm in one corner of the world, Abuja, Lagos? <laughs> I'm in Niger State, and that's 40 people that I'm reaching. That's all. The whole world can be our parish. Is it that I found myself in Australia, and then my head is off? I am my... I am. I feel like I'm in cloud nine because I live in Chicago. Is that all? May we live like people who want to be finished. May we live intentionally. May our lives, may our lives count. Let it be that we've poured out. We've poured out completely by the time we are going. There's an eternity that will reflect the extent to which this short time, no matter how long it is in our conception, this short time for which it's only an investment. When our paradigms are constructed in a way that we recognize it as an investment, then we have started to live. And may you be found living while you're here, not merely existing. May you reflect. May your day, Monday, tomorrow, next week, may it reflect what was written before you were sent here. What was written in the master's own book. That's the only way that impact will be made. And my prayer, Lord, is that everyone here, everyone who is hearing now, and everyone who will still hear based on the recordings, Lord, of these things that have been shared here today, mighty God, will, their lives will count. Anything that is a distraction, any affair, any affair, any affair, that is restricting, that is constrict, co constricting, that is diverting, that is killing, that is keeping anyone from being who they should become. Let that be dismantled this night. That there will be the emergence of the champion that you have actually made. Thank you, Father, because it is done. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 That God recorded the downside, downside of life. Yes, very much. Um, and has it also been written beforehand where a man will spend eternity? That was not recorded there, like what the things that we read. But we read that God said that he gave that opportunity. He gave the opportunities. He recorded. He wrote the things. Like, these are the kind of... That's what every manufacturer that is out there, actually, anybody that is preparing designing a bottle of water the plastic itself has designed it for the water that is being produced to fit in it when that bottle is going around the chain there are still drops of water that i a, 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 a couple of months ago i decided i won't see where they are producing water i i've seen where actually water works in enugu 
um, where they are producing, you know, the um, piping water from, you know, the production phases. So I hadn't seen a place for this satchel water and the bottled water. So like two months ago, I stumbled into somebody who had it and I went there. I saw that while the, while the bottles are moving around the chain, some drops fall off the bottle. Does it not make it water again? It's water, but it ends up on the floor, not in the bottle, not available for consumption, not available at the delivery point to satisfy taste. It's still water. It was made to enter the bottle. For some reason, it did not. But that's it. But whether God records the downside, oh, I see it written in the scriptures so clearly. The Bible says, brethren, the Bible says, dear friend, it says in Romans 5, and it also is also repeated in 1 Peter and, you know, one of the most powerful scriptures. He says there, he says, count it all joy. Listen, and um, to make it. That, now, let me read it from NLT. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. You see, what he's saying in essence is that there is a journey, there is a character development journey that endurance is needed for development of character, the character that makes us to be complete and wanting nothing. Complete, able to manage everything. God writes them down. He says, rejoice when we face those things. Rejoice because that allows, that curriculum is necessary for an output called character. And that character cannot be formed without it. When that character is there, we will have an outcome of people who are complete, ready for anything. And so that's how I want to answer that. So when I see that, I rejoice. He said, rejoice. It is written. It's included. The cross was written down that he will pass through. If God wrote the cross down, is it not having food for one week or money or being delayed in getting things? Is that what he won't write down? If the cross was written for his only begotten son because of purpose. What is it that we are passing through that he could that he will not have written down? Thank you. Wow, thank you, sir. So someone is asking that um, if we are to go to the graves and the, how do we know that we are currently discharging effectively? Only to engage the Lord to ask him why we are here on earth. Like we always say, there are those important questions. Where am I going? If I settle, where am I going about eternity? In fact, to be very frank with you, when I gave my life to Christ in 1995, those were the two things that confronted me. One, the two questions that I faced. And I started writing about them. Where will I spend eternity? Settled. The next question was, why am I here on earth? The remaining part of the time. And it was not a, a joke. I spent two years there about, about three years asking that question. Asking God. Praying, fasting, demanding, studying to get some insight into where I'm here on earth. Everything else, who you marry, where you live, you accept, what you don't accept, what you say no to, even if they are very reasonable and they are six zero ways, you can say no. It's only when you discover it. When you do, life begins. 
थैंक यू thing i want to say is that there's no shortcut nobody will do it for you <laughs> no shortcut the only the only shortcut is to know that there's no shortcut <laughs> and to settle down stay from the noise and get into discovering it asking god engaging god searching studying asking, exposing yourself to experiences as well to know some things that we don't discover. When we meet certain situations, they just well up in us. There are people who just get angry. Like everything in them wakes up when they see some who has a problem, like who falls, who falls, who has an accident. They, they just can't wait. They can't wait. I need to solve, this thing needs to be solved. And the first person to engage already, even though you didn't hear it from anywhere, that's telling you the kind of thing you are wired for. You're wired for. It will be different for somebody, example, I'm just using an example. Different for somebody who, decide, if I am that kind of person, I should not go and start doing internal medicine. I will cause trouble. I will give I'll give insulin when I should not, when I should check a little more. I, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. I would do things when I've not gotten electrolytes, urea, and creatinine. I would, I would, be, because, <clears throat> excuse me, because I just want to solve problems. I'll be better fitted in surgery and more especially in emergency department. That's giving a sense. It's the same thing. That's what I'll say. But engage yourself in it i spent years go to everybody that go go around i see those that have lasted long committed to a course spent time to go down first and ask and engage while doing it i'll answer one of the questions i saw that too. while doing it expose themselves to opportunities for service and all that as they are rising be doing things. Be doing things while you are waiting for the place where he will place you. He's the one that keeps people on lampstands. We don't choose our lampstands. He does. God does for us. I can write a book about experiences. I can tell stories, poetry. I can, Grace that is moderating us here has written, Grace, three books, four. There are probably, mm -hmm. how many three, now? Four. Three. Uh -huh. So maybe you've done three and it's three that you're seeing and you're happy. I may be asking you for 97. Where's the remaining 97? Where's it? Are you done? So there are those kinds of books. There are still other levels of books. There are different types. And what I'll say is, whatever we are writing, let's be sure that we, I can write now, like the brilliant books Grace has written, they are related, I can go to her, you know, what and ask for them. Very nice at a certain level and they are serving that stage. There were, there were some books. I can tell there was a book. There was a certain one. I, I, I started writing in 1990, 1998. I thought I could finish it by the, because I had a lot of information. I thought that it would be done by the time I was graduating in 2000. Friends, I, if I had pushed it, it would have been theory. There are many people who are trying to write what they have not even experienced. They are doing theory. What they have not touched, tasted, and they write and they make, make all the noise about it. So I want to produce books. I am grateful that I did not pursue that book that I did not finish it. 
it works. Um, it's about time to do it. It's there are pieces of it. There are chapters I saw in the notes because the notes are still there. But what is left of them now? I say chapters of maybe like five, six, seven, eight pages. Eight pages. What is left of them is two paragraphs. It's only two paragraphs that is <laughs> only two paragraphs that are important. It would have been what I would have been circulating. And after all, I had platforms. I was past national president. I'll come for CMDA conferences and publicize it and get brethren to, you know, don't ever auto <laughs> Timothy. The things that be careful about, you know, those, those a number of things that he mentioned to, to, to to him, be an example in what you teach, your life, your what you are writing down. May it reflect what we have lived out. It's more important than just producing books um, of certain natures. I'm saying, I'm being specific about that, of certain nature. I hope I've dealt with that question. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And the twenties and thirties, twenties and thirties. There are, I, I think, I'll, it's important to say a word about that. I think that's the last question, right? In twenties yes, and thirties, you know, life is really in phases. Life is in phases and in sizes. Life is in phases, and it's important to identify our phase and to live in it. To live in it. I, I think there are things that people are looking for and I'm not, everybody has his stage. Everybody has, people have their perspectives. But from my side, my, the way it happened for me, um, people were, <laughs> they get money, house job, youth service, and some people are, what they're doing with it now is to buy land. It's fine. Some people, that's the maybe it's what it works for some. Maybe for me, it wasn't my orientation. My orientation was that those periods, being in twenties and thirties, were largely the times to turn over the fund. If I have extra that I could push for building, I'll do that. But like Ecclesiastes says, it says develop your business before you build your house. It was a time for turnover in terms of capital investment. That capital being first of all me. And I did that investment. And they are the kinds of things that it's not that you're not you're not training, adding value. And you're not adding value before because you can't pay for it. And where you carry that money to do is that you bought one piece of land in the forest so that you can appreciate in 15 years. That's why you're not investing in yourself. You see, just one training can move you from, let me use the bank workers as an example, can move you from the counter where you are counting money and meeting the customers to just the level behind. You see those ones that are approving for those ones in front to pay. Sometimes you go and see them, they are younger. Much younger, but people who invested directly went straight for a master's with what they had, what, what they were getting. They turned over the capital first to build the investment. And after four years of that investment, what somebody else is getting over 15 years, they just get relocated positionally and what they end is so different they are value they are assets let's grow in such a way i'm not doing i'm not i'm not i'm not doing clinical medicine anymore i probably did that last 2016 i've done many other things to be frank so many other things and if, if you wake up today that there's no job for me, I'll go to University of Abuja here and open a, start, 
a, an off, a place, open a shop for analyzing data. I will, and I know what to do. <laughs> I'm good with statistics. That's not the point. I'm good with the softwares. I learned them on my own. I don't go to any. I sat down, used help in AP Info, and learned to do data analysis. Read the books, read around his book on statistics, read the other ones from here, read the other ones, read. I kukuma read until I read those the dummy series, statistics for dummies. That's how I how I learned statistics, which by the way almost cost me trouble because my part two work. I now started doing Cox regression, Kaplan Meyer statistics. They almost failed me. Why are you doing this kind of what is this that you are doing? If not, the Arroyo was also one of the examiners there that said because he had a small portion in her book. She said that this thing is actually what is needed for this loss to follow up analysis. That's how I survived. But the fact is that I can enter that place, open a shop and start doing data analysis. And I'll do it for people in up to four universities. I won't go home. Live in such a way, develop in such a way during the 20s and 30s that if you lose a job today, and you walk to the next street because there are other capabilities. Don't be fixated on one because there are other capabilities. The next street you can get another job. It's not only medicine. We'll be doing it. For let it be that it comes to that time that as we're doing medicine, it's not because you're waiting for government, the salary that government is paying, because that's not what in fact, that one can come every month, and that same money, you are using it, you are spending it on the patients, and you are happy, you are joyful, let that be where what we are looking for can only happen with what we do with this period with, especially for those who are younger with what we are doing now let it be, my university salary I can tell you by you know what it is even for a professor. It was not what we were living with. Let it be that kind of diversification without losing the joy. That's the only way we, we will not lose the joy of serving the vision of caring for the whole man. Let's if you stop everything now, me, I was also I have other things I'll start. I'll start doing building construction. Not construction in terms of the blocks, but to mobilize. And not just that. Paint I'm it. able to design paints. I mix paints. Oh, oh yes. Honest <laughs> house. I if you go there, you'll be wondering what kind of where did they get this paint? The paint that is used, the numbers is not 2030. You know, 2030 is that yellow one, that cream colored one. You don't find those, the colors that is in Honest House, you don't find it in the market. I mixed it. The stone wall, I designed that. The tables, I designed them. I can go into that. I start helping people design and selling those. This is a bit beyond the architectural work. It's a bit of now aligning, you, you know, it's a, a, a bit of understanding your market, understanding the people's desires, and trying to shape what fits their interests. Owner's house is packaged in a way that there's a meeting hall, there's an office, there are rooms. It's made to fit purpose. And may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen.